welcome to It's a Woman's World, where we'll meet achieving women making a difference in our community. I'm Carolyn Bruna. Our guest is Sheila Kaufman, award-winning author of 26 cookbooks, food editor, culinary lecturer, with books ranging from regional recipes like the Turkish cookbook on Turkish cuisine to books with recipes for easy and elegant cooking. Today, we're going to talk about chocolate, its history and attraction, and careers around chocolate in the culinary world. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you. It's <laughs> nice to be back. I'm actually glad that you're here because I was going to mention you had been here in 2015 with uh, Susan Delbert, the executive right. chef of the famous National Press Club. And then we talked about Turkish cuisine. That's right. And actually, I'd like to tell people that they can still see your show by going to the video section of our station and selecting your names, Sheila Kaufman and Susan Delbert, under It's a Woman's World. Sounds great. So pull <laughs> us up. But today is going to be very exciting because we're having a fun show. We're talking about chocolate. What could be better? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to start by asking you your relationship with chocolate. <laughs> well, I was born a sugar addict and a chocoholic. Unfortunately, I was born into the wrong family because my mother's idea of sweets was a vanilla wafer and an unice sponge cake. And my idea of sweets was and is eat the icing, throw the cake away. So when I was nine or 10, my mother taught me how to bake, which was self-preservation for me. Oh. And I began baking brownies and chocolate chip mm. cookies and making fudge and chocolate cakes. And that was the beginning of my culinary career, although I started life as a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I noticed not only you, but so many people, we have such an attraction to chocolate today. Um, how much chocolate do we really eat? Well, the Swiss eat about 25 pounds a year per person, and the Americans eat about 13 to 15 pounds per person. So I think I'm Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is your favorite chocolate dessert, and can we find it online? It's going to be online under my... Uh, website www.cookingwithsheila.com under okay. desserts and it's called Horatio's Mousse oh. and this was a dessert that um, when I first went to teach cooking in Hawaii mm. I went to Horatio's restaurant and uh, I'm always eager to try chocolate desserts mm. and the mousse was served in uh, like cereal sized bowls so there were good portions and wow. I ate three, <laughs> oh, really? and I knew that I had to have the recipe. It was like eating chocolate velvet. I knew there was something different about it, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And so I asked for the owner, and I literally begged yeah. for the recipe and told him I'd like to put it in one of my cookbooks, and mm -hmm. he was very gracious, and I oh. still love it. Uh, the problem is uh, if you make it the day before, it might not be there the day of your company coming. <laughs> because you might have to eat it? Is that oh, what you're yes. saying? <laughs> that was wonderful that they actually gave you the recipe. Some, Very cool. Some chefs are wonderful yeah, like that. Yeah. And okay. others, when they give you a recipe, they leave ingredients out, but this oh, one really? gave me the whole <laughs> recipe. I wanted to ask you to explain, please, the types of chocolate and what those numbers mean. Okay. Well, there's really three kinds of chocolate. White chocolate is not chocolate. It's just sugar. Yeah. There's milk chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, and dark bittersweet chocolate. Oh. And the numbers tell us how healthful a candy bar is. Um, they've had numbers for about 10 years, but nobody ever knew what they were. So... 33% means that 33% of this chocolate bar mm -hmm. is all the things that make up cocoa. The uh -huh. cocoa mass, the cocoa liqueur, the butter. And 70% is sugar. Mm. So that's why milk chocolate can't be used in baking. There's so much sugar in it, you'd have to be a chemist to know how to take it out. One little bar of... Um, Milk chocolate can have as much as 22 grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. So to get to the healthful chocolate, mm -hmm. you want to go to anything that's above 72% because this now becomes dark bittersweet chocolate. And 72% up to 91 or including 85, anything from mm -hmm. 72 up is going to have very little sugar. And that's what you want if you want to eat, you know, more healthful. Like um, 
this bar of 72% um, has about 11 grams of sugar. And it'll vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, the 85% has only 6 grams of sugar. And mm -hmm. the 91 has only 4 grams of sugar. I see. Well, that's quite interesting. I never also, they have a lot of fiber. Ah, more fiber and less sugar. Yes. That's very good to know for everybody dieting today or, or at least watching dieting. what they It's just if you want to be... But also to cook and bake, as you're saying. Eliminate your, your sugar. You can, you can use 72, up to 72% mm -hmm. as a substitute for semi-sweet chocolate. I see. But you can't go above the that's 72 because then it's too yeah. much butter and not yeah. enough sugar. Oh, well, that's great. Huh. Well, tell us a little bit about the history of chocolate and um, maybe a little bit just other cultures and their beliefs on chocolate? Well, the Mayans believed that it was a health um, elixir, that it cured diseases, everything from coughs to fevers, mm. that it promoted fertility, uh, it gave you strength, good feelings. It was the food of the gods. And it was only for royalty and the rich. Mm. And it was drank um, special occasions in the in the royal courts. Now since it could rejuvenate the body, the mind, the spirit, the libido, women in the peasant class were not allowed to have it. Oh, that's really <laughs> because it was no a fair. blessed a blessed brew and the food of the gods. Oh gosh. We, yeah. we it was a no no. It was no women really were left behind even in chocolate. That's just yeah. not right. I didn't <laughs> I know. know that at all. <laughs> Okay. We, we didn't count for a long time. <laughs> so, um, as far as the history, um, at first the chocolate was quite bitter, though. Wasn't well, when, I remember when that? When Cortez and... first had it, uh -huh. it was so bitter, he thought it was really kind of obnoxious. Mm -hmm. And the Aztecs um, made, they made, all made a powder out of the cacao beans, cacao. and then they added water and they would whip it to a froth, you know, think Starbucks 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and they, they added chili powder. Oh. Um, for the taste. They, they, liked, the... they liked chili Hot. and they added it to their drink. Now, when, when Cortez had it, this is why he thought it was so awful, but he saw the value of it. And so he added two new world ingredients. Uh -huh. He added uh, cinnamon, and sugar. Uh -huh. And then it was very palatable when he took it back to Spain. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And you were telling me just earlier that it was cacao back then, right? Is that how yes. you say that? And not chocolate. If it's chocolate. spelled C-A-C-A-O, it's pronounced cacao. Cacao. And instead not of really cocoa. Chocolate. We, we call yeah. it cocoa. No, mm. there was no real chocolate as we know it for huh. more than 250 years since 1500. That. It was mm -hmm. only a powder. Mm -hmm or a drink, or ground up to use in hmm. other types of recipes. Mm -hmm. um, it was incorporated, oh, they had in the 1600s, they had a recipe for sea duck with chocolate ragu. Of course, you know, and the Mexicans made moles mm -hmm. uh, out of chocolate. Uh, chocolate was shaved into other ingredients, and then, mm -hmm. oh, around, the late 1600s, early 1700s, they began to use the powder in baking. Oh, okay. So there was no candy for 300 years, at least 300 years. Oh, very interesting. And it even... Was, it was only the drink and the powder. Uh-huh. Oh, and then the hot chocolate. You were telling me something about the oh. nuns from Spain? When, um, no, the nuns in Mexico. Mexico, um, oh, okay. In Oaxaca, mm. decided to add hot water. Mm -hmm. to the cocoa powder, mm -hmm. and that was the first hot chocolate. Oh, Up to then, okay. it was only a room temperature drink. I see, yeah. And um, the chocolate bar, then that? Oh, went, the chocolate the... bar really didn't come almost till the late 19th century. Huh. That's why I said for 300 years, it, it did not exist as candy as we know it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a long time in coming. I see. It was, it was a very gritty substance if you, if you tried to eat it. Like, you know, there was sand in it. And um, it wasn't smooth, and it, it just hmm. didn't taste that great. It wasn't until the Industrial Revolution uh -huh. when the new technologies, and they began to have uh, steam engines that would run equipment in factories, 
that they began to find ways to make chocolate much, much more palatable. And that's why by the middle 1800s, you began to have what we would think of as, as chocolate candy. Oh, they just little molded pieces of candy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, hmm. The first real candy bar was 1901, was Hershey Bar. Hershey, yes. <laughs> Okay, and that's still very popular today oh, yeah. and that's very prevalent. Milk chocolate. <laughs> but milk chocolate, yeah. I was reading that milk chocolate, they still say it's the um, uh, the one that's eaten most. Is the oh, it is. Favorite? Most, most, most people favor milk chocolate. They still, they do. In certain parts of the country, some favor milk chocolate and some favor the semi-sweet chocolate. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, hmm, that's very that interesting. that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, that is. And the, the health benefits of chocolate today. Um, I was thinking they were similar to red wine, but I think you said no. <laughs> no, chocolate has less caffeine than red wine or tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. um, it is heart healthful. And we're talking healthful chocolate has to be above 72%. It has to have that less sugar oh, to be I healthy. See. Um, it's heart healthy. It, it promotes good oxygenation of the brain. Mm -hmm. It prevents plaque forming on your teeth. Really? It, um, huh. it, it, some people think of it as an aphrodisiac, but it, it, it definitely <laughs> makes, you, <laughs> makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the highest food in magnesium that there is. Really? And it has over 300 chemical compounds in it, and huh. um, it's just, it's, it's wonderful. But again, the healthful ones start it's amazing to me. over 72%. Mm -hmm. So you want mm -hmm. 72 and up, you want the 80s, and you want the 90s. I don't know anybody that really eats the, the 100. That would probably be like... Eating much. a little square of Baker's sweet and chocolate. Yeah, yeah, much too bitter for us. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. What are some other chocolate recipes that you could um, recommend to people that off the oh, top of your God, head? I love chocolate. I yeah. make the best brownie. Um, it's, it's the heavenly divine chocolate brownie. And it's made with a pound of dark, ah. bittersweet chocolate mm. and... Um, a little bit of espresso coffee and then sugar and eggs and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. flour. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can put pecans or walnuts in it. But mm -hmm. it's made in such a way that um, the top is always, you know how it begins to like crack? Mm -hmm. But the middle, instead of being cakey all the way to the bottom, the middle has what would be like a truffle filling. A chocolate uh -huh. cream mm -hmm. because of the way that it's baked and what happens afterwards. Oh, I see. You have three different distinct layers oh. in this brownie. So that's its attraction, right? Where it's attracted well, to chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, anything and then with chocolate. There's chocolate yeah. pies and a million yeah. different kinds of chocolate cookies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you can make your own chocolate candy. You can just, for instance, melt some chocolate, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever type you like, mm -hmm. and then stir in like mini marshmallows and nuts, and oh. then just make a log on a piece mm -hmm. of tin foil, roll it up, throw it in the freezer for oh, five great. minutes, slice it as cookies. Oh, I love that. It's a quick, quick recipe for people. Yeah, it's yeah. called chocolate mosaic. Uh -huh. And uh, the other thing is you could, again, melt some chocolate. I like to just take um, candy ginger mm. and throw I it in ginger. some dark bittersweet chocolate, oh, throw it in the freezer for five minutes, oh, and then wow. eat it all. <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. Um, you well, could take thank you. <laughs> small pretzels and crush them up mm -hmm. and then take the marshmallows or nuts. Again, put it in melted chocolate, just yeah. roll it in a log and wow. put it in the freezer. Oh, it sounds great. I love these recipes. Thank you. Some quick things for people to use. Oh, yeah. Great, great. We're going to take a break now. We're going to return with some more information about chocolate and some chocolatiers that are living in our area of the woods here in Montgomery County. We'll return after the short public service announcement. Do your part. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank today. Welcome back to It's a Woman's World. We're speaking with Sheila Kaufman, culinary author and lecturer, and we're going to talk about the culinary careers around chocolate. 
Sheila, we have talked about uh, chocolate and its attraction and a little bit of its history, and now I want to concentrate on careers because you've made a wonderful career of chocolate and your love for chocolate. And you were telling me that there's um, four right chocolatiers here in Montgomery County. Yeah, so in, in, I wrote an article for Montgomery Magazine, and people can go online and, and read it. Mm -hmm. But there are four women chocolatiers in Montgomery County and two men. Those are the only ones that I know of that make chocolate mm. here in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. And they're very diverse, the kinds of chocolate that they make, everything. Uh, one of the women makes um, body products and chocolate rubs for food besides mm. making um, chocolate candy. Mm -hmm. Another one makes about the best kosher chocolate. Oh, kosher. Fabulous <laughs> different um, mm. kinds of bars, seasonal and holiday and um, lots of different spices and tastes. Ah. And then the other two, one makes fudge and the other one makes um, a special decorative chocolate. Like she'll take a picture of your face and she'll put it on her chocolates. Oh. So if you're having a, a special occasion or a party like a wedding or a shower or something, she can put designs that you like on your chocolate candy that you serve mm -hmm. or give us gifts. Yeah. Well, that's so interesting. And when I was looking up uh, the chocolatier definition, and it said a mad scientist. So I see you're saying exactly the designer, a sculptor, who crafts chocolates into mouth-watering works of art, flavors, shapes, and colors and textures and patterns <laughs> that are more appealing than just the basic yeah, candy bar. And that's what you're explaining. Sometimes on TV, on the cooking shows, they'll show the the chocolate sculpture contests, oh. and Albert Ooster used to have them out in, in Gaithersburg. I mean, the, the works of art. I went to once a fashion show where the hats and part of the clothing were made out of chocolate. Really? The things were magnificent. It, oh. it was just unbelievable what these creative geniuses really? can, can come up with. So, and here we thought Lady Gaga was so fashion forward with meat as, <laughs> as a fashion accessory. And here we have chocolate, which is even better. <laughs> well, you know, if, we talked about some of the uses for chocolate, but if, if you go up to Hershey Park, mm -hmm. um, I think it's $500, but I'm not sure. But you can Ooh. have a chocolate massage. Oh, Okay. <laughs> a whole day of chocolate I don't know, at the spa. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it's exciting. But there there are yeah. lots of creative oh, uses for funny. chocolate. Yeah, yeah. You can you can shave it and put it into chili. If mm -hmm. you're making chili, it adds just a wonderful depth to it. Kind mm. of almost like a mole, but just melt some in or shave. Also great in beans by themselves. Oh, really? Or, yeah, I never would have thought of these types of things to add chocolate but now chefs are using them oh, in yeah, a variety of ways in yeah many many yeah. many different ways yeah, yeah. it's amazing not, not just the mole is yours yeah yeah right, right and the women chefs are as creative as the men if not more so oh, of course <laughs> well we can then really people can do this at home they can just take yeah. a little chocolate candy bar and just and now would you recommend if you do that though uh, using a darker chocolate rather than the i would use a semi-sweet or mm -hmm. if you really like the dark bitter sweet mm -hmm. you know you could use that but don't use milk don't chocolate. use milk and no. if you're going to for other with sugar yeah yeah that's me <laughs> okay and then um uh there was also something else that i had read about oh chocolate um uh, not only the chocolatier, but a chocolate um, master who actually, um, they have, oh, I know, it's courses on chocolate. You can take courses They're, and classes Calibre in chocolate. Offers, chocolate um, master. A <laughs> lot of them in Chicago, people who really want to be um, pastry chefs with a really fine chocolate education huh. will go there to learn um, to make these really decadent chocolate desserts. I mean, really decadent. Sometimes you'll see this type of dessert uh, in the nicer restaurants or if you go down to Williamsburg um, at the inn down there. But um, especially in Europe, um, hmm. it's, it's fascinating. It's hmm. very time consuming, just like pulling sugar is. I mean, the average person is not going to want to make uh -huh. most of these uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. But you can go and spend a day or you know, take a class or you yeah. can go for that special kind of a certification. That's very interesting. I hadn't even realized that until I started researching for your show. Yeah, yeah. And I saw an ad for a job in the Chicago Tribune. Are so there's your Chicago. <laughs> I might. I just might. <laughs> you will also, another part of another career for uh, around chocolate is uh, lecturing, and you're doing that and um, speaking. Uh, and I know uh, you speak at certain places. 
community college, and what, what else? What other places will you go? I'm teaching a class on um, the history of chocolate for uh, lifelong learning for Montgomery College in March. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a lecture on one day, and then we're going to go to the chocolate factory in the Cantlands on another day and mm -hmm. have a tour and eat chocolate and drink hot chocolate. Um, I do lecture besides on just the history of chocolate for organizations or women's groups. I also lecture on the history of the Jews and chocolate, which I've done for huh. a lot of synagogues. And all of these things come with chocolate tastings. People <laughs> want to taste, you know, all the different types of chocolate there mm -hmm. are and see what mm -hmm. the differences are. I've done um, bridal showers where I've talked about chocolate uh -huh. and done little demonstrations of chocolate desserts and things like that. Mm -hmm. Anybody mm -hmm. who wants it. That sounds great, yeah. And so there's just a variety of careers. And a cook, of course, being a cookbook author and writing is another career. That some people just focus on that, but you have that added to your book of knowledge. Um, I have a partner, Paula Jacobson, and we have a company called Cookbook Construction Crew. And what we'll do is if you wanted to write a cookbook, mm -hmm. uh, we would help you by editing it or proofreading it or testing the recipes for it. Mm -hmm. um, we mentor people, mm -hmm. um, no charge. It's just a courtesy type of thing that we do. We will also, if you decide you wanted to write a cookbook, we would have you send us four or five of your recipes and then we would work in track changes on the computer, and we would edit them so that you could see what was deleted, what it was replaced with, any questions that we have that have to be answered. Um, mm -hmm. Some people are wonderful at their jobs. I'm going to just give an example. Let's say you're a nutritionist mm -hmm. and you want to write a book, and you're like the best nutritionist. Mm -hmm. That does not mean you know how to write a recipe. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what happens mm -hmm. is that people are really good at what they do that's not being an author. And even some authors, first-time authors, don't realize how important it is, the structure of a recipe. And the way to tell a good cookbook, oh. um, if you're in a bookstore, is the very first cardinal rule of writing a recipe is that the directions mm -hmm. must follow the order of the ingredients. And oh. I see so many books uh, self-published and some sometimes even published where they haven't caught that where mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't hold true and the reason for that is if I see yeah. okay if you have um, flour sugar eggs mm -hmm. and in the directions you tell what to do with the flour and what to do with the eggs but you've forgotten to tell what to do with the sugar it's yeah. right there in between and mm -hmm. you can just add it in mm -hmm. that spot yeah that's really true and and I have uh, pick, picked up recipes online for oh, I, not I, I, necessarily chocolate, but other things. And uh, sometimes they don't tell me how to use one ingredient, and then I'm really stuck. A lot yeah. of times they yeah. assume that you you know how to do things that mm -hmm. the recipe calls for that you that you really, really don't. don't. You also don't know where people get recipes, so you don't even know if they work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, we pick up so many things Some, online sometimes these days. Sometimes they're wonderful, sure. but sometimes they're. <laughs> Yeah. They're not. <laughs> That's true. Right. And um, we know, of course, that bakers use chocolate constantly. And we were talking about other uses for chocolate. So I guess we've, we've covered most of them, I think, the really fabulous ones and the attraction ones. Um, and we've even covered the one about wearing chocolate, which I'd never heard of before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I know I had thought of another career, or not thought of, but I saw it online, uh, sustainable cocoa farming. Oh, it's very important that you buy um, fair trade oh. chocolate. And what's happened is that for years, <clears throat> there's only four or five million cacao farmers oh. in the world. And they're mm -hmm. all in an equatorial belt because that's the only place chocolate grows. In fact, only one state grows chocolate. That's Hawaii. And it's a new industry for them. Mm -hmm. But they barely eke out a living. It's once they have grown the beans and fermented them and dried them mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, passed them on yeah. to what would be then the manufacturer, mm -hmm. that's where the money begins to be made. And now more and more people are aware that these people need mm -hmm. to make a, a living. Mm -hmm. And so they have fair trade 
and sustainable, and those are things you want to look for on the labels. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize that sustainable chocolate as well. Yeah, and with all the new sustainable food, uh, farming, I know, uh, plants, and, but not, I didn't realize chocolate. Chocolate is going to go yeah. up in price, um, so huh. stock up on it because are oh, you really? ready for this? The Chinese have discovered chocolate, the pleasure of eating chocolate. Oh. So the demand huh. is ahead of how much is grown. Oh, no kidding. Oh, so. my gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> buy, buy, buy it chocolate. while you can. <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, I know also we're talking about the recipes, and you, a lot of your chocolate recipes are in one particular cookbook. What is that? They're in Simply Irresistible, mm. Easy, Elegant, Fearless, Fussless. It's not a chocolate cookbook. It's everything from appetizers and soups, main courses, breads, uh -huh. meatless, you know, vegetables, okay. desserts. But there are a lot of wonderful chocolate desserts. Ah, okay. um, some things what I call delectable, others like mm. Horatio's mousse, and then cookies, pies, mm. uh, oh, and of great. course cakes. Uh -huh. And your chocolate sin cake, now that's on YouTube. I pulled that up. Oh, that's a good cake. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, a flourless one. cake. So. Oh, and the, the definition, chocolate sin cake, right? You were saying people don't click into the fact that of devil's food, where did that name? Okay, yeah. the Puritans and the, and the Catholic Church for a long time had a love-hate relationship with chocolate. Sometimes oh. they accepted it as a, as a medicine that it was okay. The aphrodisiac part, they did not like, so then they would reject it as being sinful. And the Puritans said that chocolate was the devil's food. Oh. And somebody came along and named devil's food cake. Did you ever right. wonder why you were eating? No. People don't think about the right. names of things yeah, exactly. or angel's food. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. chocolate, uh, for a long time, the church wasn't sure what to do with it. Mm. And when the, huh. when the doctors of the French king and the Spanish king recognized it as a medicine, mm -hmm. then it became an okay thing. But oh, it was also a great medium for poisoning people. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and I think one bishop or one pope was, was poisoned by oh, chocolate no. drink. Oh, goodness. So. <laughs> let's go from poisoning people with chocolate to let's give people a few tips and end with how do we tell good chocolate. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, it. The easiest thing to do is smell it. The oh. aroma is very important. If it doesn't have an odor, it can't be very good. Oh, okay. And look at it. It should have a really nice sheen to it. Um, if you see little white specks, which is called blooms, that just means the bars have been in temperature change. Mm -hmm. It is not, um, mm -hmm. it's not mold. And s s you have to hear it. Break a piece. If it doesn't have a sharp breaking sound, mm -hmm. then it's old, oh, okay. and you don't want that's it. Great. Oh, well, so it should you. feel very sensual in your mouth. Huh. Um, that's the joy of chocolate. And um, those are the wonderful. most important things. That sounds wonderful. They're wonderful tips for people on chocolate. Thank you so much. It's been exciting and fun to talk about chocolate. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I hope you've enjoyed meeting our guest, Sheila Kaufman, as much as I have, and learning about chocolate. And I must confess that this show comes with a warning, because every time I worked on the questions for this show, I had to stop and eat a chocolate cupcake. <laughs> Truly. If you know a woman who's gone above and beyond to contribute to our community, please email us. We're womansworldtv at aol.com. Remember, it's a woman's world. I'm Carolyn Bruna. See you next time. <music>